If Polo shows movement, Marquez needs to corner him. The Marquez left foot has to be outside Polo's right foot so that the right hand can be landed. That's the one that got Marquez back into the Pacquiao fight. Marquez, like Costa Zou, has a knack for landing this right hand against lefties, even without a hook as a precursor. And if one right hand is really good, well, a second one is even better. Look for this punch a lot tonight. It's an important part of Marquez's arsenal. And back here at Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, ready to take a look at perennial contender Victor Polo, self-proclaimed uncrowned champion, 14 and a half year pro, still chasing the elusive championship dream. Is this the night? The Southpaw, with a wealth of experience, has fought unsuccessfully for different versions of the featherweight title on four occasions, losing to Manuel Medina, Derek Smoke Gaynor, Julio Pablo Chacon, all by split decision, and his last fight, a disputed draw with Scott Harrison in Harrison's backyard of Glasgow, Scotland. The old boxing expression, Al, the fight of his life, perhaps never more uh, applicable. Even Polo admits this is his final shot at glory. You know, it's interesting to me how stoic he is about all the failures in the past. In that Chacon fight, uh, he slipped on a towel that was left near the corner, and that knockdown cost him the fight. With all that, his attitude, Steve, is a very straightforward one. He comes in, he does his best, and tries for the win. Kind of a happy-go-lucky approach to life. Kind of shrugs off all the, the problems of the past. He still does maintain that positive attitude despite the many gut-wrenching decisions. Very hungry, though. Extremely motivated to not let this go to the judges after so much heartbreak and plain lousy luck. Well, you talk about a snake-bitten fighter. Well, for years, Juan Manuel Marquez was considered one of the most talented fighters without a title. He'll have his fans here, still in a celebratory mood, on the heels of Cinco de Mayo. After losing his first shot to Freddie Norwood, he couldn't get a rematch. Then Nassim Hamed ducked him, denied a fight with Marco Antonio Barrera. Then it finally clicked. Title wins over Manuel Medina and Derek Gaynor. Courageous guy, Al. Interesting story. It really is. You know, Juan Manuel Marquez knows his biological talk. clock is ticking in boxing at age 31. He feels he can move on. A fight with Scott Harrison is possible to, for the WBO title. Very important for him tonight not to stub his toe. Hearing it from the, uh, the crowd, his uh, Mexican uh, supporters, a guy who clearly proved himself versus Pacquiao almost exactly a year ago to the day. And it's very important him to fight the Barreras. The Morales is Pacquiao again. He hopes for the opportunities. He says to us yesterday at the fighter meeting, all I can do is continue to win. Yeah, and part of the problem for him is making sure his mind is focused because he's had a little bit of a, uh, of a skirmish in the press with Bob Arum, his promoter, about whether he's being pushed enough for all these fights. The concern would be that that's on his mind as much as the fight. So Juan Manuel Marquez getting set to defend against Victor Polo here in Las Vegas. Let's check the numbers as we go to the tail of the tape. The champ, Marquez at 31, three years younger. Polo 5'7", tall for this weight. The challenger also has the three and a half inch reach advantage. At yesterday's weigh-in, Marquez just under Polo on tonight's weights. Marquez 135, Polo 141. That's a plus 15. And the key unified rules for this world title fight. No standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. A fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. If an accidental headbutt occurs before the end of the fourth round, the fight is ruled a no decision. If it happens after the end of round four, they go to the scorecards. So here at Mandalay Bay, Las Vegas, Nevada, getting set for Juan Manuel Marquez versus Victor Polo for the IBF and WBA Featherweight Championship. Let's get the formal introductions from our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon, Jr.
Ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to you, and we welcome you to the beautiful Mandalay Bay Resort and Casino here in Las Vegas, Nevada, as we have a big night of action in store for you. And it's all brought to you by Gary Shaw Productions, Top Rank Incorporated, and Arthur Palulo's Banner Promotions in association with the Mandalay Bay and Showtime. This bout coming away, it is sanctioned as a title attraction by the following organizations, the IBF, President Marion Mohammed, Supervisor Lindsay Tucker, the WBA, uh, President Gilberto Mendoza, Supervisor uh, Dr. Calvin Inelsing, and the Nevada State Athletic Commission, the chairman is Skip Avancino Jr. Introducing to you our three judges, scoring this bout from ringside, from Las Vegas, Nevada, Adelaide Bird, from Albany, New York, Thomas Schreck, and from Biloxi, Mississippi, Fred Steinwinder III. Our third man to the ring, the referee in charge of this bout. He is working in this, his 178th world title bout, Richard Steele. All right, fans, here we go. 12 rounds of boxing for the IBF and WBA Featherweight Championship of the World. Introducing to you first, the challenger on my left. He is fighting out of the blue corner. Entering the ring, wearing red trunks with blue trim, and joining us from Cartagena, Colombia. He weighed in at the featherweight limit of 126 pounds even, with a record of 34 wins, four losses, and three draws. He has 24 wins coming by way of knockout. He is ranked the WBA and IBF number 12 featherweight contender in the world. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, he is making his fifth appearance in a world title bout, introducing the challenger, Victor Polo. And his opponent across the ring, the defending world champion, ready to go on my right, fighting out of the red corner, entering the ring, wearing black trunks with white trim, hailing from Mexico City, Distrito Federal, Mexico. He weighed in at a trim and ready 125 pounds. His record includes 43 wins, two losses, and one draw, with 33 big wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the defending IBF and WBA featherweight champion of the world, introducing Juan Manuel. Once again, a referee in charge, Richard Steele, now to give instructions. Okay, I spoke to both fighters in the dressing room. I'm cautioning them again. Obey my commands at all times. Shake hands. Good luck. Both Marquez and Polo say the big winners tonight will be the fans. Let's hope they're right. Marquez, a laid-back counterpuncher, notoriously slow starter, a boxer first, tremendous heart and determination. The challenger, Victor Polo, a rangy, aggressive southpaw, looks to press forward and maintain a fast pace. In the past, not many of the top guys in the division anxious to fight Polo, but you wonder, have age plus wear and tear taken their toll? Polo made it clear to us that the one punch he felt he could land, and we talked about it in the keys, but it's worth mentioning again, is the straight left hand. We've seen Marquez get hit with that punch before, and the fact that Polo is so tall and has a reach advantage as well over Marquez would let you believe that maybe that punch could get in. While that plan could make for a crowd-pleasing fight, could it be a tactical error, even though you say it could get in, because of his height, if he if he plays tall, so to speak. Exactly. If he doesn't crouch. But you wonder if it might be playing into Marquez's hands. Marquez said he's prepared for either way. If, if Polo comes at him, he'll lay back. If Polo lays back, he'll go get him. Remember, Polo probably doesn't hit as hard as Manny Pacquiao. So that a big plus for Marquez. He could afford to be brave. Marquez always seems to be in there against lefties in his big fights. Yeah, Freddie Norwood, Derek Gaynor, you mentioned Pacquiao, and of course, 
Here he is now against Victor Polo. He says he's fought so many lefties, he, he feels comfortable fighting them. And he does bring to the table uh, a weapon that for him works very well against a, a lefty, and that is the straight right hand, which he doesn't even need to start with the hook, but you see he did it there. When he starts with the left hook and then follows with the right hand, it's a very effective weapon for him. Marquez uh, told us in the gym that is what he was primarily working on, combinations to set up the right hand for this fight. When you think of great and glorious Mexican fighters, you think of Julio Cesar Chavez, but Marquez, an example of the Americanization mm -hmm. of Mexican fighters, don't you think? Yeah, it's interesting, and he, he talked to us about that, Steve. He said, you know, more Mexican fighters becoming uh, more boxer punchers. We think of Mexican fighters to a great extent as very aggressive, coming forward a lot. This doesn't suggest they don't have skills coming forward. They're not just brawlers, but he, he's a little bit more of a new trend with Mexican fighters. Yeah, it's not to say he isn't willing to war, as illustrated by the Manny Pacquiao affair, but in retrospect, that was ill-advised strategy. Marquez, a counterpuncher by trade, he can lead, but prefers his opponent to come to him. You know, Polo is leaving uh, his right hand down. He's so conscious of Marquez throwing the, the right. He's leaving some, himself open for the left hook, and I, I think we might start seeing some of those hooks cranked up by Marquez. Traditionally a good weapon against the lefty, uh, and Marquez has a good left hook. This is not his money play. Good right hand by Marquez in that exchange. Final seconds of round one, mostly a feeling out process here in the opening round, but Marquez landing nicely Time. towards the end. Our translator, Ricardo Jimenez. Now we know what we have to do against okay? He's coming up. He's coming up. Don't fall back on your punches. When he hits, you counter. So we enter round two. Polo and awkward southpaw. Polo in the in the red trunks. Marquez in the black. Polo very tall for this weight class. Also at 34, old for a featherweight. Would be old for a heavyweight, but it is for a, for a featherweight. Polo likes to stick, peck, and probe with the long right jab. Technical type fighter. A lot of ability and a lot of experience. Nacho Peristain, of course, the voice in the corner of Marquez, a legendary trainer who's worked with uh, many, many great uh, fighters. A cerebral, sort of low-key type uh, guy in the corner. There's the hook for Marquez. Polo is really making that punch available to Marquez. Very, very much. And you, here's where you, you have to say to yourself now, given how much they concentrated on getting that right hand in, here's where making an adjustment is important. Will Marquez be able to do that and see that that's what Polo is giving him? A long right hand that got in by Victor Polo. Marquez expecting the left. Now for Victor Polo, this is the, ooh, there's the, uh, the big right by Marquez. This is the right strategic fight for Victor Polo, even if he isn't winning it so far. He's not rushing in, he's not dipping down as much as he might. He just hasn't been able to land as effectively as he wanted. Another long right by uh, uh, Polo, but glove on glove. Marquez, uh, a sharp, accurate puncher. Does have power in both hands. Likes to vary his attack. He'll throw rights, lefts, uppercuts, hooks to the body. Good arsenal. Trying to get inside Polo's long jab. Look how quick the right hand of Marquez is. He just barely missed that. But, Steve, that's the trick. Oh, now he's mixing in those hooks, and they are available to Marquez. Exquisite combination by Juan Manuel Marquez. 
almost having his way here. And you know what he's done? By getting off to a good start, he's forcing Polo to come to him. That's exactly what Marquez wants. Marquez staying on the, on the outside. Boy, Marquez does have pop. Marquez fighting a very tactical fight. And he is winning. Marquez, the champion of the IBF and the WBA. He comes right back. Good exchange as they go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Marquez getting the better Time. of the two. The straight right hand of Marquez is he just... It just barely almost gets there and shows you the quickness of that punch. And then he follows up using the hook and the combination. A left hook very, very available for him. Look how quickly he closed the distance between himself and Polo. That's a really an important point in this fight. <laughs> When he hits you with this arm, bring this arm up. Come on, we got to work in this round. Come on. So we enter round three scheduled for 12. Marquez getting off first. And that is not the norm for him. He's been able to get through these first two rounds, as you point out, Stephen, get a lot done. And that's not always the case. So, uh, and now he's dictated the pace of the fight in which Polo is coming to him more. And that's what he loves. Yeah, Marquez just brimming with confidence now. The right, a lashing right by Polo. By Polo. Marquez slipping. Polo is not landing with that straight left hand like he would like. He's thrown it a fair amount of time, but he, Marquez doing a very good job of slipping that punch. See in there, he set the left up beautifully with two jabs that landed, but Marquez slipped the left. Marquez continues to dictate the, the pace and the tempo of the fight, which is something that Polo is used to doing. Polo said to us that if he wins this fight, he would consider sticking around for quite a while to try and hang out to his title. But if he should lose tonight, maybe one or two more fights, and that would be it. So a lot on the line, clearly, for him. 34 years of age, his fifth world championship try. He's lost three by split decision, one by draw. His last fight to Scott Harrison in Glasgow it was so controversial that Harrison sort of went into exile. He left Glasgow for Spain. Kind of a Floyd Patterson, but I think without the disguises, though, yeah. to be sure. A lot of people thought that uh, Polo should have uh, won that fight. And Harrison, somebody that it's possible right. that Juan Manuel Marquez might fight next uh, should he win here and, and trying to unify a couple of the titles. Marquez told us he was targeting the big names who left the 126-pound division to fight at 130, like Morales and Barrera. Also said that perhaps a rematch with Pacquiao. Doesn't want to avoid anybody, but uh, there is speculation of Harrison. Should Marquez get by Polo? Here's the jab pecking away for Victor Polo. It hasn't set up that straight left hand like he would like so far in this fight. There it is, and that one almost got it. Marquez shooting the uppercut. Time. Tranquilo, tranquilo, te vas montando. 
Relax, relax. You have to throw more punches, you hear me? Without losing control. You have to throw more lefts. More jabs. And also throw the uppercut. Jab and uppercut. Jab and cross. And use this arm. Breathe. Breathe again. Victor Polo has tried to land the straight left hand. Now there, you, you see he sets it up nicely by pawing with some jabs, but Marquez is able to slip. He pawed with the right hook, but that's a perfect illustration in my mind of what's happened in this fight so far, Steve. Polo's doing the right things, but they're not working. And later on in the, the round, Victor Polo from long range trying to make things happen again. The double jab, the left hand doesn't get there. And that's been repeated many times in this fight. And it's round four scheduled for 12. Marquez looks to be winning easily. Very consistent. Throws a similar amount of punches almost every round. Highly conditioned. Excellent resolve. Terrific ring smarts. Knows how to engage and disengage. Had an excellent quality of opposition, impressive wins over former champs Derek Gaynor, Manuel Medina, David Jimenez, Alfred Cote, Julio Gervasio, as well as several top contenders. Now, you know, if you, if you want to keep it real, as they say, and talk about Juan Manuel Marquez right now, some of the crowd is a little disenchanted with the fact there's not a little more action in this fight. That's because Juan Manuel Marquez understands what it takes for him to fight his fight and win. It's part of the reason why he's not quite as marketable and saleable as Morales and Guerrero, who for the most part create more action in their fights. I'm not suggesting he's a boring fighter. He's certainly a skilled one, but, you know, that doesn't resonate, especially with Mexican fans as much. Yeah, we've seen two different Marquezes the last couple of fights. An exciting, ultra-aggressive Rolling Marquez in the Pacquiao fight was very willing to fight fire with fire and a dull counter-punching Marquez versus Orlando Salido in his last fight. He won a tactical uh, fight there and this is more of a tactical fight here. But you're right, he'll just, he doesn't care. He, he'll do whatever it takes to win. And he's capable of good combinations. We've seen spurts of that here and of course power punching we know. I mean, now, why take risks? He didn't need to take risks in his last fight against Orlando Salido. Good short right hand there by Marquez as he tries to get that punch in. Minute to go in round four. Marquez continues to control the action. Marquez, the champion in the black trunks. Polo, the challenger in the red. Again, a right. left hand that Marquez slips. Victor Polo trying to be more active, fainting more with the jab, throwing more jabs, and now throwing more straight left hands, but Marquez has done a good defensive job. Polo, like Marquez, a highly seasoned pro, one of his biggest wins over Angel Vasquez back in 2000. Better round, though, for Victor Polo in this round. He's been more active, might even have stolen this round. You wonder, as the fight gets deeper, if conditioning will play a role with Polo, who is 34. Generally, he is always in excellent condition, though. Time! Well, last night here at Mandalay Bay, the... 80th Annual Boxing Writers Association of America Awards Dinner, a gala event that brought together a sea of boxing luminaries. It was really a treat to be amidst so much boxing royalty. James Tony, who made some big news recently, and Vit Vitaly Klitschko, uh, the linear heavyweight champion among those on hand. Zab Judah, who we saw in a great performance. And great uh, luminaries from the sport, obviously. Bernard Hopkins, who amazingly got the Manager of the Year Award. That's right. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather Jr. on hand, Winky Wright, Jeff Lacey. Uh, yeah, who, who has performed so ably on our network. And uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, he had a couple of good moments in boxing, as I recall. And there's Glenn Johnson, who won the Fighter of the Year award. And at the end, they took this picture of all these great champions together. It was just a delightful event. First time it was held in Las Vegas. Now the seat of big time boxing. Flawless hosting job, too, by the classy Jimmy Lennon Jr. Yes, indeed. It was a wonderful night. Round five, scheduled for 12 for the IBF WBA featherweight title. 
Juan Manuel Marquez, the champion in the black, has uh, pretty much controlled the action, but Victor Polo, the challenger in the red, coming on a bit in the last round. Marquez's brother Rafael is a Bantamweight champion, won the title two weeks after Marquez won his featherweight title in 2003, and uh, lots of talent in that family, and there's the right hand of Marquez getting in. A wicked right that certainly got the attention of Polo. And a good straight left by Polo. He's starting to land a little more now, again, this time with the right. Polo has one, one plan, and he's going to stick to it and hope it works, and that is to use the jabs to set up the straight left. And there is one of those lefts getting in. He's just going to keep doing it, and I think appropriately so. Uh, that's a thing that'll work for him, but there's the countering of Marquez. Unanimous to Marquez for press row, 39-37 after four rounds. And ironically, that's exactly the way I have it. Well, they do. Fisher from MaxBoxing.com, Dan Raphael from ESPN.com, Tim Smith from the New York Daily News. Polo gaining in confidence here the last couple of rounds. Nice right hand there by Marquez, though. He's found a, a little bit of a home for that right, especially as a lead right. In some ways, though, this is precisely what Victor Polo doesn't want, a fight in which there are lots of close rounds. He's been here before, <laughs> four, four times before. Three close losses and one draw, and um, he'll gnash his teeth if he's standing there after 12 rounds waiting for a decision. Marquez threw combinations earlier in this fight, but now he's primarily throwing one punch at a time, maybe two occasionally. Under 30 seconds left of the fifth. Jim Gray. All right, Steve, thank you very much. I'm here with one of the great champions of all time, Julio Cesar Chavez. He will fight May 28th at Staples Center against Devon Robinson. This is, of course, his interpreter. This is his son, Julio Jr. He will also fight. Let me ask you about the fight coming up on May 28th. La pelea del 28, ¿cómo te sientes? Me siento como de 20. I feel like I'm 20 years old. I'm ready for it. Now, of course, in the main event, Castillo has patterned basically his whole life after you. You're his hero. How much pressure is there on him? Castillo ha sido tu, es tu ídolo. Sí, sí, sí lo entendí. You understand? <laughs> eh, dile que pienso que, que Castillo va a una pelea dura, pero si él hace las cosas bien, como debe ser, si va para adelante y sube, su, sube su, su, su derecha, yo pienso que él puede ganar la pelea. He's in a tough fight. He just has to take care of business. You trying to follow in, foot, in father's footsteps right there? Mm -hmm. Está siguiendo los pasos de tu papá. I hope to do a lot in boxing. I hope to even get to close to what he did. You're not, not, not going to stick around to fight your, your son, are you? Maybe with you. Well, that's an easy match. Ricardo, thank you very much. Both Julios, congratulations. We look forward to seeing you on the 28th. Don't get hurt. Thank you, thank you. Back to you, Steve. All right, Jim, uh, a living legend, often an overused term in sports, but with Chavez in Mexico, it fits. That is, she is beloved there and always will be. You know, the competition that these two men have fought is uh, pretty extraordinary. Uh, Marquez himself has fought nine world champions, formal or present. And uh, that's really an extraordinary record. Polo himself, we noted the four attempts to win a championship, but other good fighters on his list. So. You have to respect these fighters in the lighter weight division who are fighting tough guys. Good combination at the beginning of this round by Marquez. By the way, Chavez and Robinson on Showtime pay-per-view on May 28th. 
Round six. Notice how Marquez just doesn't initiate action that often. There he throws a wild right hand in the hook. And you know, he showed himself in the Pacquiao fight where he was forced to initiate action after he had those three knockdowns of the first round, he was way behind. He knew he had to, even though Pacquiao's an aggressive fighter and comes in, still he had to uh, go after him. And uh, sometimes you need to do that. Polo is landing regularly with the straight left hand now. He's getting through Marquez's gloves more frequently. And he's scoring. But there's the counter punching Marquez. And a beautiful straight right hand right down the pipe by Marquez. And a long left hand by Polo. Yeah, you're right, Steve. That left, which was the big part of his game plan, is starting to, to get there a little bit. Not a bad round for Victor Polo. Here comes Marquez going to the body. A rare attack by Marquez. At the beginning of this past round, Marquez came out and did what I think he probably needs to do a little bit more of. He throws the right, then comes with the left hook. Uh, nice combination, very clean punches landing. And we look at it from a different angle, and you see the left hand, terrific left hook landing. Uh, Polo has been kind of giving him that punch a little bit more. But the straight left hand for Polo has been kind of a recurring theme. The two jabs, even though they don't land, help set up that straight left hand by Polo. talking earlier about the success of late of the lighter weight classes in boxing today since Prince Nassim Hamed oh good exchange here Marquez involved since Hamed burst onto the scene the featherweights in particular and on up have exhibited explosive power speaking of power the right hand by Marquez and that's a knockdown four five six seven eight Victor Polo down for the fifth time in his career. The fourth time in a world title fight. So early round seven, Marquez dropping Polo with a straight right upstairs. And how characteristic of Marquez? Is he rushing in to try and finish him off? No, he's carefully weighing his options. Very patient. You can view that as a big plus or something of a minus, depending on your outlook. Obviously not going in for the quick finish after he had Polo down. Trying to remain cool and calm and just picks his, his moments. Third man of the ring uh, getting involved, Richard Steele, Hall of Fame uh, referee, plus an ordained minister. Retired from officiating, become a promoter, and returned to refing. Take a look at the press row, people. There's uh, their scores you can see. I have it 58-57 for Marquez in the ballpark of uh, the night one round even. Otherwise, I'd be close. Are unofficial. Big round for Marquez as we approach the final minute. This would be an, a pivotal round, obviously, a two-point round right here toward the second portion of the fight will put pressure on Victor Polo. Marquez showing some defense. Eluding the attempts of Victor Polo. Hard body shot by Marquez. 
Marquez is a, a thunderous body puncher, but most people think he does less of it than he should. Also, part of the problem is here he is in against another tall lefty. When you see him in these major fights against left-handers, you know, you can forget about the fact that when he's in against a conventional righty, he can get a lot more done. Great right hand landing by Juan Manuel Marquez. And he gets back into position to uh, counter. Missed with that right, came up short. He's starting to realize, Marquez, is that that hook is a weapon worth throwing. Partially because Polo doesn't counter too well with his own right hook, so it, it, he should maybe crank a few more of those up as this fight wears on. Two-point round for the champion. Sit down. What's the matter with you? Sit down. Respira, tú respira. Breathe, breathe. We take a peek at um, how this knockdown came to be. Straight right hand after he had pawed with the jab. And Marquez is very good at landing this right hand. And from overhead, we'll see also the footwork involved. Now, he claims he can land that right even when his foot is inside the foot of the south point. Guess what? There's a case where it happened. Usually you want your left foot outside the foot of the southpaw. But his foot, as you can see, his left foot very much on the inside. But he gets the right hand in anyway. And it's because he's very, very uh, aggressive when he throws that right hand. So we have some fireworks in the seventh. They knock down for Juan Manuel Marquez. Polo on the canvas for the fifth time in his career. Marquez comfortably in front as we enter round eight. And Marquez goes right back to work. Victor Polo is a very, very good featherweight. He, I mean, he is ranked number 12 by a couple of the organizations, which I think is ridiculously low. He is certainly one of the top five or six featherweights in the world. He's proven it against top competition. And the reason that's worth noting is we want to put in perspective if Juan Manuel Marquez gets this victory, for his purposes, you want people to understand he's beaten a very, very good fighter. Digging in with uppercuts is Polo. Back comes Marquez, missing with the right. Part of the reason we've seen Victor Polo throw mostly straight jabs and left hands is if he throws uppercuts and right hooks to the body and things of that nature, he leaves himself very vulnerable for the counterpunching of Marquez. Nice left by Marquez. He gets in and out so quickly, Marquez. Lightning the speed with his hands. Like there. Straight right, right on the nose by Marquez through the defense. He is closing the distance a bit between himself and Polo, and, and that's why that right hand is getting there as well. And Polo more desperate coming in and helping to close that distance. Yep. Marquez is right finding a home throughout this uh, fight. Polo just bobbing and weaving, but hitting nothing but air. As Marquez keeps his range. He keeps his range, but he gets in just close enough to score. See, a right hook just landed by, uh, by Polo because uh, Marquez took some chances with his left hook, but it didn't hurt Marquez because the right hook is not a big punch for Victor Polo, which all the more reason why Marquez can take a few more chances with that left hook. Marquez down just one time prior to the Pacquiao fight when he went down three times in the first. Down in his 18th fight back in 1996, he came off the canvas to win on points. And a question will knock down against Freddie Norwood in a title fight. I was there for that fight, and I do believe uh, that was not a knockdown. Norwood stepped on his foot, and that may have cost Marquez the decision against Norwood. So Marquez down uh, five times all told. If you're just tuning in, one knockdown in this fight, but Polo tasting the canvas last round. Round seven. We end round eight. Marquez going to work as Polo against the ropes.
One of the recurring stories of this fight has been one that Marquez is happy about. His right hand has, for the most part, been very effective. There it follows a left hook earlier in the fight. He can get it in, especially when he starts out with the hook. There's another example. The right hand has been very effective, and that led to finally that knockdown featuring the right hand. So Marquez came here with the idea of landing the right. Polo came here with the idea of landing his left. Marquez has done better in that department. This is the kind of sequence that fans would like to see more of for Marquez. He gets Polo trapped, and he's willing to brawl with him, duke it out, took a few shots in exchange, like that uppercut, but for the most part, Marquez was able to get his man cornered and land some pretty good shots. Marquez able to get in there uh, freely because uh, he feels that he can't be hurt by Victor Polo's punches. As mentioned earlier, Polo just doesn't punch as hard as Manny Pacquiao. But Marquez showing his bravery in that fight. Here he doesn't have to worry about it as much. You know, Polo with his 24 KOs, decent pop, but he just hasn't really gotten one of those straight left hands in exactly the way he would want to so he could test whether he could hurt Marquez appropriately. Polo looking to set up the straight left with the, the right jab. There's the press row scoring. Paul Marquez. Another big right hand pops the head of Victor Polo back. Marquez from Mexico City, Polo from Colombia. Oh, a left hook. Followed by a straight right by Marquez. I think the left hook is a very underused punch for Marquez. Now he throws it fairly wide, so if somebody's a great counter puncher, that's a problem for him. But if you're not in against a fantastic counter puncher, he can land that. Punch. Marquez is a very intelligent, ring smart, yep. savvy fighter. He knows what he's up against. He knows what's in front of him, what Polo has to offer. So there's a good straight left hand by Polo and a countering right by Marquez over the top. For the most part, Polo has not been caught on the inside a lot. And that's part of the reason why Marquez hasn't been able to get even more done. Uh, because when they do get on the inside, that's when Marquez tends to punch in combination of both the body and the head. Which is why, by the way, should Marquez win this fight, the idea of him fighting Scott Harrison is a delicious thought for boxing fans because they will be right in front of each other and Marquez won't have to worry about finding him. And it goes back to why the lighter weight classes yep. are becoming today's thing in boxing because the best is fighting the best to determine who's number one absolutely you can always be watching a fight uh, thinking about a really good one that's on tap and that's it's great that's the way it should be a straight right hand by marquez he has landed four or five of those now polo's gotten a few things done in this round but he's paid the price for it because he's had to be more aggressive and those punches are bullseyes i mean they're targeted to the chin and they're landing Marquez is a very accurate puncher, always has been. Another one by Marquez, and another! Two straight right hands! But Polo is game. Nice exchange at the bell. Every time you throw the punch, you hit him. But when you hit, don't you see? You gotta hit and keep going forward. You gotta keep your punching and keep your arms up. You're doing well. Things heated up in the last round. Marquez able to use that right hand. And usually when he sets up the right, as he did there with either the left uppercut or the left hook, it works better. And the distance there, not good for Polo. He got clocked with a, a right hand as just, that was right toward the end of the round. And we take a look at this sequence and you see Marquez with the straight right hand and their heads banged together as well. That's probably where uh, Polo got a little shaken there. Interestingly, that's the first time we've seen that all night. We're already in round 10. Usually when you have a southpaw, 
heads come together and feet get tangled. We haven't seen much of that. Juan Manuel Marquez energized here in the last round or two, and we're seeing him be much more aggressive. Round 10 scheduled for 12. This for the IBF WBA 126 pound championship. The title holder in the black, Juan Manuel Marquez, who seemingly has a comfortable lead over the man in red perennial contender, Victor Polo. Chance of Mexico to get behind Juan Manuel Marquez. Fourth defense of his IBF title, third defense of his WBA belt. Victor Polo inexplicably uh, rated number 12, as Al pointed out by both the IBF and WBA. Yeah, shouldn't really be higher than that. But uh, tonight he's met a very, very tough champion. And I think most people believe, oh, another beautiful right by Marquez, that Marquez is the best of the featherweights. So certainly somebody like Scott Harrison would like to make the argument uh, and, and may have a chance to make it in the ring. But Marquez is probably the best of the featherweights. First, they have to find Scott Harrison. <laughs> right. Where are you, Scott? An APB. Or an, is that what they call That's it in Europe? <laughs> Halfway through the tent. Polo coming forward, looking to land with the left and a wide right hook. Straight left hand, but the, a point punch by Polo, doing no damage whatsoever. Oh, Marquez with a corkscrew right uppercut. Right on the chin. By the way, Scott Harrison will be defending his title on Showbox just uh, before the uh, Ricky Hatton Costa Zoo fight that we'll be doing over in Manchester. So, Showtime uh, viewers will have a chance to see him. Looking forward to that June 4th clash in Manchester, the MEN Arena. Zoo versus the Hitman Hatton. That will be a wild atmosphere. Now, for Victor Polo, Marquez has taken control of this fight to the point where it would seem logical uh, that Polo would not be able to win a decision at this juncture. Uh, and so, Victor Polo is faced with the dilemma. I need to attack more, but when I attack, I get hit with punches like that. So, Marquez okay, scoring at will. A beautiful series of punches by Marquez. Finishing the round in strong fashion. Well, if you missed it last night on Showtime, Showbox, the new generation, had something you just don't see very often, except perhaps in the movies. In the opening seconds of their main event, both boxers swung, connected, and knocked each other down. A rare double knockdown. Check your local listings for the rebroadcast of this dramatic, action-packed bout. Watch for the next edition of Showbox in two weeks. Showbox, the new generation, returns to the Showtime lineup on Friday, May 20th at 11 p.m. Eastern and Pacific as mighty Mike Arnautis defends his unbeaten record in a 12-round junior welterweight bout versus Marco Angel Perez. This will be Arnautis' record fifth appearance on Showbox, and his fights are always action-packed and very entertaining. Also on the card, Alan Green battles Rocky Smith in a 10-round light heavyweight contest. Championship rounds, round 11 from Mandalay Bay in Las Vegas, Nevada. The co-feature to the main event of Jose Luis Castillo versus Diego Corrales to see who is the best lightweight in the world. And uh, we got to mention that that Scott Harrison, the Michael Brody fight. Harrison will be defending his title be June 3rd, just the night before the Hatton Zoo fight. And that will help uh, continue a year for Showbox that has been just superb. They've had some really excellent fights. I even snuck on to do a show. They even let me yes. come over there and do a Showbox. Uh, it's, it's been a great series, really. Nick Charles and Steve Farhood do a great they job. Do. They sure do. And we're happy Nick's back and feeling good. He was on the... DL for a, a while, but good to see Nick back in action. Here's the press row scoring. 
Doug Fisher has it by nine points. That's the widest margin. Doug from MaxBoxing.com. Polo just landed a very nice straight left hand. They've been rare, of course, in the last four or five rounds, and it didn't really do any serious damage to Marquez. Victor Polo in it, you know, a very difficult situation right now. He needs to attack, and yet attacking makes it all the easier for Marquez, the superb counterpuncher, to get something done. And, of course, Polo's been hurt three or four times in this fight. Marquez just uh, continues to extend his lead. Polo has not been able to solve the formidable defense and counterpunching style of the champion. How frustrating for Victor Polo now in his fifth try at a world title. And right now, you know what's going through his mind. Here he is in round 11 thinking, oh, deja vu. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm headed toward another decision loss um, and likely his last chance at a world title shot. The only difference, not much drama in no. this decision as in his past four to this point. The defending champion seems to be the clear victor. Polo, of course, would have to do something really dramatic. Certainly at least need to knock down or two and probably would have to knock Marquez out to win this fight. One knockdown, Polo, off a straight right hand to the head in round seven. Marquez pushing Polo back with right hands. Continues to uh, set the pace. And I think one of the keys in this fight is that in addition to landing his right hands, uh, Marquez has mixed in a lot of left hooks and left uppercuts and varied his attack a bit. Shown a nice array Nine. of weaponry. Right. One to go. Dame. Ultimo round. This is the last Ultimo round, Polo. This is the last Ultimo round. This is the last si round. No por nocaut, no if you don't win by knockout, you're not going to win. Pero la pelea está perdida. La this fight is lost. You punked up, so you're going to lose this fight. Entendiste? You hear me? Last round. Hey, hey, tienes que Listen, salir you have to go out there. You have to knock him out. If you want a championship, you got to do it. Do you hear me? Move to the side. Move to the side. Move to the side. And hit him in the body. Manuel Marquez on the left. Victor Polo on the right. Polo getting the Newt Rockney treatment in his corner. And they are absolutely right on target. Yeah, unfortunately, the part that was missing was exactly how he's supposed to create this knockout. And that's been the, the sticky part for him. Came in with the plan to throw lots of straight left hands. They saw the left hands that landed at Pacquiao, but they haven't landed for Polo. And instead, what we just saw is happen. The right hand of Marquez has been so effective. A steady diet of right hands by Juan Manuel Marquez. Scoring points throughout the night. Even put Polo down once. Marquez sticking to his game plan of laying back and counter punching throughout the evening. And it has worked. It may not be the most compelling or dramatic or exciting style for fans, but he does what he has to do to win. And I think part of the reason why certain fights with Marquez are more interesting and why likely, for instance, a Harrison fight would be intriguing is he needs somebody like a Pacquiao or a Harrison who will make the fight with him and then that creates a lot of excitement because his counterpunching becomes very exciting. The old boxing axiom, styles make fights. Yep. I've heard that so Yeah. And it's true. Some body work by Marquez. He will mix that in occasionally, though he hasn't had to do too much of it. Marquez can obviously coast through this final round and keep away, but he likes to uh, trade. Well, he would love a knockout. I think he would like, from a marketing standpoint, to create a stoppage in this fight. 
Little bit of a welt around the right eye of Marquez, but nothing to get in his way. He is going for the knockout, Marquez, despite the fact that he is seemingly way ahead. See the hand speed of Marquez. When he chooses to throw combinations, he's very quick. There's a left hook by Marquez that almost did the job. But Polo showing guts. Amazingly, after he missed a wild left, he came right back with a left hook following it. That shows you how quick his hands are. A furious assault by Marquez. A masterful boxing performance by the champion Juan Manuel Marquez, hearing it from the crowd. And while he did not get the knockout he would have liked, he did kind of put an exclamation point on this fight with a very good 12th round. And, you know, people remember the last thing they've seen. So a convincing victory, at least from this vantage point, for Juan Manuel Marquez. Over this man, Victor Polo. <laughs> As this one goes the distance. Marquez looking to retain his IBF and WBA featherweight titles. Big finish for Marquez. Very aggressive in round 12, looking to perhaps score a knockdown or a knockout. Uh, and certainly, at the very least, left a lasting impression in people's minds. That was the wild left hook. That looked like something Floyd Patterson would throw against Ingemar Johansson a million years ago. Uh, a leaping left hook. That one missed, and then boom, he says, I'll do that again. And really leaped with that left hook and got him in only great conditioning. How about a 34-year-old at the end of a 12-rounder doesn't go down from that? You have to give credit to Victor Polo. And then when Polo got trapped against the ropes combination punching from Marquez accurate with the right hand throwing to both the body and the head feeling like at this juncture he could uh, maybe send Polo down to the canvas or even get him out of there Polo a very clever Wiley veteran and even here you can see that slipping punches very effectively finally getting off the ropes and that was Marquez's chance to really close the show but he did more than enough, we would assume, to win this decision. A dominating performance by the champion Juan Manuel Marquez there with uh, Nacho uh, Beristain. And, and sadly, it could be the end of the road in terms of uh, championship attempts. It was number five for Victor Polo. Uh, all four previous attempts falling by the wayside in very close, dramatic fashion. Not this time. He was stoic about it. He told us, if I lose and I have to get out of boxing in a fight or two, I'm going to open up a store and enjoy life and you know what he seems like he has the demeanor to do that well there was a moment in this fight where the power of marquez was really pronounced and that was here in the seventh round when a straight straight right hand sent polo down went against the ropes but in that round after it marquez really wasn't able to follow up too much on this and i think while it was a little bit of a flash knockdown i think he did stun Polo with this. I don't think he was dramatically hurt or uh, in danger of being stopped. But he certainly was stunned with that hand and Richard Steele in there right away. Richard Steele did not have a lot to do in this fight. Very cleanly fought fight mostly from the outside and um, this was the one most dramatic moment for uh, Marquez. Yeah there was only one clash of heads and it was mm -hmm. very slight. And almost no clinches. So Juan Manuel Marquez is uh, all smiles. He, he's all business, no nonsense. He, he went about his business in very solid fashion here tonight. Let's get it up to our ring announcer, Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Thomas Schreck scores about 118 to 109. Judge Fred Steinwinder III scores at 119 to 108. And Adelaide Byrd scores about 120 to 107. All three in favor of the winner. 
and still the WBA and IBF featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez. Here he is, ready. Okay. A decisive unanimous decision. It was all Juan Manuel Marquez, 120-107, 119-108, 118-109. one And there he is with the belts. Juan Manuel Marquez coming up next as Duck falls over Las Vegas, Nevada. The fight the fans have been waiting for. Jose Luis Castillo, Diego Corrales, two big, strong lightweights with aggressive styles, excellent punching power. They've proven themselves Time and again versus top opposition. Can't wait for this one to start. Right now, let's go up to the ring and Jim Gray. Jim. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Once again, Ricardo Jimenez will translate. Juan, congratulations. How were you able to dominate this fight? ¿Cómo le hiciste para dominar esta pelea? Yo creo que en el gimnasio trabajamos la técnica. Víctor Polo es un gran boxeador, un gran peleador también con técnica y yo creo que estas peleas de técnico contra técnico se ganan a ver quién es mejor. Uh, without a doubt, you know, he, I'm a great boxer. He's also a great boxer and he showed it tonight. I thought it was a good tactical match more than anything tonight. Did this fight change in the seventh round when you got that flash knockdown? Did that give you the confidence to continue to attack? Cuando lo tumbaste en el séptimo fue lo que te dio la confianza? No, yo creo que desde el primero o segundo round este, nosotros empezamos a hacer nuestro trabajo, de ahí empezamos a agarrar confianza y yo creo que con la técnica y la condición que traíamos todo salió bien. You know, I, I was very confident coming in and after the first two rounds I felt that I had it. It's just a question about putting it together. Juan, what will you do now? Will you try and move up and chase your rivals, Pacquiao, uh, Morales and Barrera, or, or will you try and unify this uh, thing with uh, Scotty Harrison? Uh, la 130 te gustaría subir a los totos ahora o en la 126 te quedas no este me gustaría subir a la 130 para pelearle al mejor que esté en la división y este y si se puede pelear en la 126 para hacer peleas unificatorias también pero lo mejor 130 I like to go up to 130 because I know that's where the big fights are but I wouldn't mind unifying if there's you know titles to be unified I love to fight the other champions when will you make a decision cuando vas a tomar una decisión yo ya estoy más Más decidido que nunca, nada más está en el promotor y está en toda la gente que promueve el box. It's not up to me, you know, the promoters have to get together, but I'm ready for whatever fight they put in front of me. Juan, congratulations. Thank you for your time. Thank you. All right. Back to you, Stephen Al. All right, Jim, thanks very much. Let's 